That is particularly pertinent to the current presidential race and the decision making of the next president. Five years later, after that initial war, we should have all learned the lesson of that Iraq vote. We should have all learned that you can't give the Bush administration an excuse to wage war. But just last month, the Senate voted for an amendment that raises the risk that we could repeat the mistakes of Iraq. Here's why this amendment, called the Kyle Lieberman Amendment, is so righteous. It opens with 17 findings that highlight Iran's influence inside of Iraq. Then it says, we have to structure our military presence inside of Iraq to counter Iraq. Recall that the initial rationale inside uh, for invading Iraq was weapons of mass destruction. Now it is to counter Iraq. It goes on to say that it is a, quote, a critical national interest of the United States to prevent the Iranian government from exerting influence inside Iraq. Now, why is this amendment so dangerous? Because George Bush and Dick Cheney could use this language to justify keeping our troops in Iraq as long as they can point to a threat from Iran. And because they could use this language to justify an attack on Iran as part of the ongoing war in Iraq. I don't want to give this president any excuse or any opening for war. Because as we've learned with the authorization of the Iraq war, when you give this president a blank check, you can't be surprised when he decides to cash it. Among my Democratic opponents in the, this primary, Senator Clinton's the only Democratic candidate for president who supports this amendment. She said, like she did five years ago, that this is the way to support diplomacy. Now, this is a real difference. I disagree. We all know that Iran poses a threat. We do need to mount international pressure to stop Iran's nuclear program. We do need to tighten sanctions on the Iranian regime, particularly Iran's Revolutionary Guard which supports terrorism. But this must be done separately from any saber rattling about checking Iran's influence with our military presence in Iraq. We should not be arguing that our troops have to stay in Iraq to counter Iran. Now is the time to end the war in Iraq. Now is the time to start bringing our troops out of Iraq immediately. That's why I have a plan to remove one to two combat brigades a month so we can get all of our combat troops out of Iraq within 16 months. That's as quickly and as responsibly as we can do this. The only troops I will keep in Iraq for a limited time will be to protect our diplomats and carry out targeted strikes on Al-Qaeda, not sustain combat, not controlling the streets of Baghdad. And I will launch the diplomatic and humanitarian initiatives that are so badly needed. So let there be no doubt, I will end this war. And it is critical to make certain that we don't have yet another rationale for why we perpetuate this war. Now is not the time to give George Bush and Dick Cheney any, any excuses to escalate this war. Now is not the time for the Congress to send mixed messages. That's why my position today is the same as when I stood up in Iowa on September 12th and said, George Bush and Dick Cheney must hear loud and clear from the American people and the Congress. You do not have our support, and you do not have our authorization for another war. Five years after the initial vote for the Iraq War, we should have all learned the lessons that the cowboy, cowboy diplomacy of not talking to people we don't like does not work. You do need tougher diplomacy with Iran. But the way to support tough diplomacy is not to vote for reckless amendments. The way to support diplomacy is to actually pursue it. That's what I've called for throughout this campaign. Direct diplomacy without preconditions. As JFK said, we should never negotiate out of fear. We should never fear to negotiate. And that's what I'll do as president. Not the Bush Cheney diplomacy of talking to our friends and ignoring our enemies, rather real, direct, and sustained diplomacy. Now, I have 
on occasion been attacked for this position. A couple of months ago, Senator Clinton called me naive and irresponsible for taking this position and said that we could lose propaganda battles if we met with leaders we didn't like. Uh, just yesterday, though, she called for diplomacy with Iran without preconditions. So I'm not sure exactly where she's standing on this issue, but I can tell you this. When I am President of the United States, the American people and the world will always know where I stand. I don't see how we can rally the world unless we have a president who's willing to lead. And I'm not afraid that America will lose a propaganda battle with a petty tyrant. We need to go before the world and win those battles. And as president, I will. You know, the cautious, Conventional thinking in Washington says that Democrats can't take these positions. Uh, or that we need to say one thing in a caucus and primary campaign, but another in a general election. That's the conventional thinking that said that Democrats had to vote for war in 2002 because there was an election coming up. An election, by the way, that we lost. The conventional thinking says that Democrats can't win elections unless they talk and act and vote like the Bush administration has suggested when it comes to foreign policy and national security. But understand this, I'm not running to conform to Washington's conventional thinking. I'm running to challenge it. That's what I did in 2002, that's what I did in 2004, and that's what I will do as President of the United States because I think the pundits have it wrong. I think the American people have had enough of politicians who got out of the way to look tough, who say one thing in caucus and another in the general election. When I am the nominee of our party, the choice will be clear. My Republican opponent won't be able to say that we both supported this war in Iraq. He won't be able to say that we really agree about using the war in Iraq to justify military action against Iran, or about the diplomacy of not talking and simply saber rattling instead. You won't be able to say that I haven't been open and straight with the American people, or that I've changed my positions. And you know what? The American people want that choice. I think they welcome that choice, because I believe that's what's needed in our next president. We have had enough of misguided wars in Iraq that should have never been fought, a war that needs to end. We've had enough of presidents who put tough talk ahead of real diplomacy. We've had enough of politicians who put power over principle, or of a government in Washington that shuts you out, and of presidents who don't hold themselves accountable. This is about what we stand for as Democrats. But much more than that, it's about what we stand for as Americans. Because there are plenty of Democrats and plenty of independents, and yes, plenty of Republicans out there who are ready to turn the page on our broken politics and blustering foreign policy that's been so commonplace in Washington. That's how we're going to bring this country together. That's how we're going to restore our security and renew our standing in the world, not by shifting with the political winds, but by standing strong in any storm and standing up for what we believe in. I would not be on the stage today if the promise of America had not brought my own father across an ocean. I would not be on this stage if generations of Americans had not fought before me so that the American dream could be extended to someone named Barack Obama. That's why I've spent my own life fighting for that dream. No matter how difficult it's been, no matter how tough it was to take a stand. And that's why I will always tell you where I stand and I will always tell you what I believe. And when I am president, that is how we will meet the hard challenge and reclaim the dream and make the United States of America, a light to the world once more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes.